In our last video, we covered the benefits of building from the back line, as it creates space further up the pitch for the strikers to exploit. Before you watch today's video, I highly suggest you check that video out to see why teams employ that tactic, because today we're looking at the best counter to build up the high press. This video is brought to you by OneFootball. OneFootball is hands down the best app for any updates in the football world. From transfers, statistics, goal scorers, assists, or any news, OneFootball will cover it. It's the best app to have while you're watching a game, as it gives you live statistical updates and commentary to help you better understand how the game is being played. OneFootball makes following your favorite team incredibly simple, and the best part about it is that it's completely free. So if you think it's something you might enjoy, click the link in the description down below to get started. Now, before we go any further, it's important to understand the concept of pressing and how it's developed over the years. Pressing is when the defending team put pressure on the opposition, either by closing them down, closing down the players around them, or by forcing the opposition to make a specific play that is easier to stop. It's an active part of the game that requires every player to move together and block off certain areas of the pitch. During a press, the players will have a different task depending on their position. The attackers will usually look to put pressure on the opposition defenders by chasing them down. The midfielders will look to block passing lanes and shadow mark the opposition's midfielders. And the defenders will need to maintain the defensive line, moving up and down along with the team to squeeze the space available to play. The defending team can choose to initiate their press at any time. A high block will immediately put pressure on defenders and goalkeepers. A mid block will look to start their press near the centre and will aim to stop the midfielders from having time and space on the ball, while a low defensive block, also known as parking the bus, will aim to completely limit the space in front of goal. For the purposes of this video we're going to be focusing mostly on the high block structure, as this is the most common in the high press. However, if the low and mid block is something you'd like to see then let me know in the comments down below. The pressing game is by no means an innovative tactic and has been around for many decades. But the style and frequency has changed drastically in the past few years, thanks to possession-hungry managers such as Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola and Julian Nagelsmann. These managers and their teams aim to dominate the game by retaining the ball as much as possible. And the best way to do this is to regain possession as soon as you've lost it. In the 1970s, Rinus Michael's legendary Dutch team took the world by storm with their aggressive pressing game, and is something that looks rather outdated when compared to the structure of a modern day press. A decade later, an Arrigo Sacchi's AC Milan would dominate the club scene with a similarly aggressive pressing game. Needless to say, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to the press, and each team will have their own unique ways of forcing the opposition into giving up possession. But there are a few key components that are present within each pressing move, pressing triggers and pressing traps. A pressing trigger is a set of circumstances that act as a prompt for a team to initiate their press. A lot of these may seem pretty obvious and intuitive, however it is fundamental for the team to consistently recognise these patterns. Some examples include a bad touch or a bad pass, a moment of hesitation or when the receiving player has their back to goal. All these should be cues for the player closest to the ball to start closing down the space immediately and will need to be supported by his teammates to effectively limit the space needed to move the ball forward. However, not all mistakes should lead to a press and the defending team will need to check their shape before aggressively closing down the opposition, as if not enough players are ready to move then this will just lead to the team leaving dangerous gaps that can be exploited. Secondly, pressing traps are a more tactical method of forcing the opposition into an uncomfortable position. They usually require more organisation and are tougher to execute, as you are not relying on the opposition making a mistake. An example could be closing the centre of the pitch and forcing play out wide, where it's easier to defend as the pressing team can use the touchline as an extra defender. Or the defending team will seemingly allow a player in midfield to receive the ball, before being closed down by multiple players. An alternative could see them leave the opposition player completely unmarked, but will effectively close down all the passing options available, forcing either a difficult pass or an individual play from the attacker. Both triggers and traps are essential for any effective press, and is here where we see the true genius of some of the best managers in the modern game, with their own unique approach to regaining possession. To gain a good understanding of the different ways of pressing, we're going to be taking a look at three key managers. Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola and Julian Nagelsmann. These three managers aim to achieve similar results with their high press, however there are a few differences in how they're executed. Let's start with Jurgen Klopp. 
Firstly, to truly understand Jurgen Klopp's style of pressing, it's important to understand the concept of gegenpressing. Gegenpressing or counterpressing is a tactic in which after losing possession, the team will immediately attempt to win the ball back, rather than regrouping and allowing the opposition to settle. The main idea behind this is that the opposition is at its most vulnerable as soon as they have the ball, as the team will rarely be correctly set up to start their attack immediately. At Liverpool, we can see how the front three players will dictate the direction in which the opposition need to play the ball. Firmino will shadow mark the holding midfielder. The wingers, Salah and Mane, will position themselves between the centre-backs and the full-backs, forcing a play inside, where the two midfielders will mark the opposition midfielders, meaning the team in possession is immediately forced to go long or to play the ball out wide, where Liverpool can force them into a tough spot near the touchline. If the opposition is balled into playing the ball into the midfield, then this is where Liverpool are at their most dangerous. As if they regain possession, the positioning of Mane and Salah in the half space is a tricky one to stop, and Klopp's team can immediately create a dangerous opportunity. At Liverpool, the fullbacks also play a very important role during the press, and either Robertson or Trent Alexander-Arnold will join in on the press along with the strikers and the wingers. With one joining in, the other will move more centrally and form a back three with the centre-backs to ensure the team has enough cover for any potential long balls. So the main idea behind Klopp's style of press is to immediately create chances for the strikers and maintain the ball in the opposition's final third. Now, while Pep Guardiola's style of press is just as effective, there are a few differences in what he's trying to achieve. Pep Guardiola's main objective is to keep possession of the ball for as much as possible. And instead of wanting to immediately create a scoring opportunity, Guardiola's team will look to restart their attacks. By doing this, Manchester City can ensure they have more control of the ball and can dictate play in a more organised and structured manner. On the pitch, this translates to a less aggressive initial press, but with more players blocking any possible passing lanes and force possession into a specific area. For example, with one of the centre backs on the ball, the striker will apply just enough pressure to force a play. The wingers will cover the centre-backs and the midfielders will cover any passes into the centre, meaning the only realistic option is for the defender to go long to the striker, where the defending team can regain possession and start their attacks from this position. Guardiola is also a key proponent of the 6 second rule, in which he instructs his players to regain possession within 6 seconds after losing it. It's one of the main reasons as to why Manchester City always have such high possession stats compared to other teams. Finally, newly appointed Bayern Munich manager Julian Nagelsmann is also known for his rather aggressive pressing tactics. Firstly, Bayern Munich will look to play with a very high line, aided by the sweeper keeper Emmanuel Neuer. Their 4-2-3-1 formation will often morph into more of a lopsided 4-4-2, with Sané pushing high alongside Lewandowski and will look to cover the centre-back pair. Müller has excellent spatial awareness and will make sure there is no chance of central progression meaning the only viable option is to the fullbacks. However, from here, Nabry can close the space down, and now Bayern Munich can have four players around the ball and will make it very difficult to get out. Nagelsmann has tended to adopt a more man-oriented press, and rather than specifically cutting out key passing lanes, will apply a lot of pressure on the player receiving the ball. If they're able to turn over possession, then Sane's advanced position can immediately create danger as his excellent dribbling and pace mean he can immediately threaten goal or look to pick out Lewandowski in the box. Nagelsmann has somehow injected more energy into an already impressive Bayern Munich squad, who look to dominate games with possession and verticality. Now, the list doesn't end there, and obviously there are plenty of other managers with their own unique approach to the high press, but will usually come down to these two categories, either looking to immediately start a counter-attack or to regain possession and start the attack from the back line. And now let me know what you think. What's your favourite style of press and who is your favourite manager that uses this tactic? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're still watching to the end of this video, thank you so much for your support. If you want to directly help contribute to the channel, I've recently started making my own NFTs, each of which is directly linked to one of the videos that I've uploaded on this channel. So for example, the NFT of today's video is this picture of Jurgen Klopp. If you think it's something you might enjoy and you want to help support the channel, then please click the link in the description down below to check out all the collectibles. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.